Welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, C2 at DVS, and today we're going to take a look at the world famous CSL router and data options. But before we continue, please, please subscribe, like, share, and comment, and give any feedback to DVS. Okay, so CSL, for those of you that don't know what is it, it's a router and data package, primarily started up for the intruder monitoring market, but now really big in the CCTV market in the UK, but obviously available in some abroad countries as well. And they've made a recent acquisition for those of you that don't know. Very, very rock solid product. Simply go onto our price list or our website where there's a CSL order portal, log in there, choose the product type that you like. Um, not only do they do routers, they do other products for intruder and testing market, but today we'll look at the CCTV. Choose the data pack required, whether it's one gig, two gig, five gig, 10 gig, whatever the usage may require. Select it, a box will turn up with the router and SIM card to the address required with the details included. There are some details on the side of the box. When you open the box itself, you get the paperwork. Now the paperwork contains all of the connection details, username and password, IP addresses that you need. So please, please, please remember to keep that safe. Take a copy of it, give some to your customer and keep one on file, record. They use a Cisco AnyConnect app that you can download on your desktop or your smartphone to create a secure VPN connection to the site. But if you're like me and you're using Hype Vision, we can use our peer-to-peer height -peer connect process and navigate that so we can go directly to the, vi to, the, to the device and we don't specifically need the VPN, but it is there as an option. All of the details are included on there, so please don't lose it. So in the box itself, you get a pack with the Wi-Fi aerials, you get a back mounting plate for the router itself, so you can screw that to a wall or an alarm panel or whatever that may be, a tower, rapid deployment tower, for instance. That then sits in it click simply kicks in so you can remove it to work on it easily. So we've got the aerial connections, the LAN port connections and the power connections. And on the front, you've got the two um, Wi-Fi aerial connections. Underneath here are the two SIM cards. So we do a, a backup redundancy option, which costs a little bit more. But if the primary Vodafone path fails, it will go to another network to give you a redundant option, but you do pay a little bit more, but it is an option that we are pushing and suggest for those that require the critical continuation of connectivity, especially for monitoring. So that's the route to itself. Well made, light, robust. You've got the aerial here for the 4G connection. So we'll just screw that in. There are extension aerials available or an external aerial. We're just gonna use the internal aerial. We have a power supply and nicely provided a LAN cable. We're gonna go and power this device up now and we'll be back shortly to see how it operates. Okay, welcome back. So the router is fitted and powered up. So we've got our paperwork here. I've downloaded the Cisco AnyConnect app, powered up, gone through, and it's connected to a network, so we're ready to go. So what do we do next? On the AnyConnect app, and on this recorder, I've got two LAN ports. One goes into LAN 1, which is already added to Hike Connect through the traditional IP method, um, and all my cameras come through LAN port 1. LAN port 2, I've connected this router in, so this is my backup connection router, or for monitoring perhaps, and this is the way a lot of people will use this. So connected to LAN port 2, I've programmed LAN port 2 to be the IP address range stated on the paperwork, so under LAN port 2, it's 192.168.100.2, default gateways, uh, subnet mask and preferred DNS server is all as the paperwork states. Now the reason being is we open and forward all of the ports from the external SIM IP address to this IP address. So it's important that you follow that on the LAN port that you require to be connected on, unless you're using the peer-to-peer -peer meth peer -peer method through Hike Connect, in which case that's not so critical. But in this instance, this is how we would expect to use it for remote monitoring. So details are in there. So on the app itself, I shall show you on my phone. So we've got the AnyConnect app already installed. It's connected and it's a, it will stay connected for around 15 minutes before it times out. Now the password may be a little bit complex to remember. So if you need it to be changed to something memorable for you and the customer, please contact CSL and they will oblige you in changing it to a memorable password. But remember, every time you open the app and connect, for security reasons, it will ask you for the password. So under connections, you can see that is the detail in there that has been added from the sheet that I showed you earlier. Now, I'm not gonna show you 
the password because obviously it's a secure method, but it is connected to the AnyConnect app now. So we are in a VPN tunnel to that uh, router device. So what do we do next? Under Hide Connect app, I've already added a CSL device. So under, if I edit this, I've added it, as it states on the paperwork, by the one IP address there, the port and username and password of that recorder. So as soon as I connect to the VPN, I am now able to view my device through those details there. So click Start Live View. It will go away and connect to all of my devices. Now, depending on the network strength and the data that I can get from it will depend how quickly this loads. So for instance, it has loaded everything there. If I double click on one of the camera images there, it will load that and show you it in HD. It does take a little bit of time because I have only got two bars and Vodafone on here on this phone isn't that great, but it is loading. So put it back to default split. That is as simple as it gets. So the app is now connected to the NVR through the CSL router via the VPN tunnel. I can do all of my normal functions as required. I am going to stop the live view on that. So two things to remember, if you are a remote monitoring station, we do a separate package to this because obviously having that timeout is not ideal. Um, but there is an ARC monitoring, an ARC monitoring package. It is on our price list. If you need further details, we can provide you that. But it allows for an ARC to be connected correctly to this for monitoring. If you're only using it for self-monitoring, that process is absolutely fine. And there's also multiple ways we can deploy this. So we could have it with multiple users. So there's a different cost if you want multiple users all connected into the same one to view it at the same time. And if you want to be really clever, you can use it as a backup router. So your primary route is through the ethernet or through Wi-Fi, And then this becomes your backup into the network outside of CCTV. It's a really good handy way of encrypting data end to end through these devices, even if it's a backup. If you want to use it as a Wi-Fi portal into the system, that's easily connected through the Wi-Fi into the system. We can, what else can we do? We can tailor packages. We've had customers that want tailored packages for their data. They want a large amount of data. They can do that as well. So please contact us if you want a specific data package and you can't see it on the price list. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you need any further details, contact us here at DVS or CSL themselves. Hopefully for doing this video, I might even get some CSL warm winter hat and gloves. Who knows? Thanks and see you next week for another how-to video.